so much. It was, um, I thought that was a very entertaining and interesting film, very, very pure um, and an intimate feeling, I thought, um, personally. <laughs> and some really beautiful shots with um, the camera winding on the road and, and these beautiful scenes in the, in the wilderness. Um, I guess I'd like to begin with the beginning. I know you, you filmed it, um, or it was made with a grant from Cannes, is that right? Um, <clears throat> from Cannes we got a residency to write the, the script. Okay, so the story... We, we already have the story and we got six months in Paris with in an apartment with other filmmakers. Okay. With five, it's called La Residence de Cannes, you're there okay. for six months in a beautiful place mm -hmm. and, it, and they give you a bit of money and you <clears throat> it allows you to, to work, right. to write. So. We, we wrote that, but it took us quite a while with Esther. Basically, from the beginning idea to the end of the film, it took six years. Wow! But in the middle of that, I'd done two, uh, two other my two other features. Okay. okay. And we always came back to this, right. and then we continued, and we always came back. So it was um, from the beginning idea, it was the same idea, but to the end uh, script, uh, lots of things right. it, it changed, but the main idea was there. Okay. And did you wait to film until you had finished the script, or did yeah. you sort of begin that? Oh, no, 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 no. We had to finish it and do the whole financing, which was also not not that easy mm -hmm. on this film. Um, it was easier on the others. The first one was very, very independent, mm -hmm. and the second one um, was almost easier to finance than this here. It was, it was three countries. It was, right. Uh, and did you, yeah, did you film on location in Germany and France? Or? Yeah. It's all, um, it's a region in Germany in the West. Um, basically that was very challenging because we had to uh, pretend that we're, we're crossing most of Germany and all of France, but we got money from two regions which made us film in these regions. Right. But uh, meaning the region of Marseille, mm -hmm. uh, which is, we're very lucky because both regions were, are very varied. Mm -hmm. And for example, so it was a big job for the location scouts to tell the story through the forest and the nature so one believes that we're crossing mm -hmm. Germany and then, uh, and then the, the, east of, the southeast of France to Marseille. Right, okay. I wondered about that when I was watching. I thought, you know, it looks like they're traveling through yeah. quite a lot of varied yeah. forest, but I'm sure that they didn't, they couldn't no. get, you know, too much, in too much area. No. Quite interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what other questions I have now. I had them. <laughs> so, um, were there any challenges that, that came up through filmmaking that you hadn't foreseen, or any, any changes that you had to, you know, last minute changes that you had to make um, well, on set, or, or even, you know, in the process leading up to shooting? I mean, one of the, for us in the writing, and also the work with the, with the cameraman, we had this feeling that, uh, the forest in Germany would be dark mm -hmm. because uh, of this lifelessness in her mm -hmm. and also of him. And the more they entered um, France, the more, the more they became a team, the more she started to live again. Mm -hmm. We'd have the sun, the light, the blue. Mm -hmm. We filmed it as well like this in the beginning, much more like this and always uh, bigger. But strangely enough, during this, uh, the shooting, we shoot it pretty much, which was lucky chronologically because of her hair as well, mm -hmm. which was fantastic because usually in films you, you're not allowed to do that because of production means or you can't have the actor then and there. And there it had to be. But in Germany, it was an amazing autumn, only beautiful sun, and exactly, I, we were trying to hide from the sun, <laughs> and it, as soon as we arrived in Marseille, it was only gray and raining, and you see it as well when they're playing football and everything, mm -hmm. it's all gray, but then actually we realized that um, that was probably much more interesting, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that um, that it's, I was really happy when I showed it in Marseille, many people from Marseille were saying, we don't even rec recognize our, mm -hmm. our town, it wasn't the cliché Marseille, Right. kind of uh, uh, pictures that you usually see. Mm. And, I, and I thought that was good. They're going to Marseille, but you don't really feel the, the you know. No, it's pulled city. back a lot. Yeah. 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 Um, and Maria did a fantastic job acting. Gosh, such a, such a compelling performance from her. Yeah, that was, that, that was, uh, it, it was fantastic. It was her first bigger role, main role. Yeah, she was, I don't know if most of you saw the white ribbon mm. from Hanukkah, uh, who won the, uh, the Golden Palm, amazing film, uh, and she played um, 
it was, it's set in the in the end of the 18th century, and she played like the boss of the of the children, and she was frightfully she was amazing, but very very but it was a very hard role, mm -hmm. a very scary role actually. And when I saw the film, I never thought of her for Adele, because uh, I needed an actress who could do both, who could really play this. The fact that she's so empty inside that she's only functioning. Uh, and that one really believes that she wants to end her life, and it's not some kind of a childhood uh, romantic kind of I, uh, idea, but it's for her really the only way, uh, the only issue mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, when life comes back into her, mm -hmm. you have to believe that uh, that she had this life in her. Right. And uh, and so that was the challenge to find this actress. We we, we looked for a, we looked at a lot of girls. And also to find a girl at that age, which is not too childish, mm -hmm. or else it, you wouldn't really believe it, that she really wants to die. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, not too feminine, mm -hmm. which is really tricky at that age, because it's exactly, she, she was 16, yeah, she just became 16 when we shot. Wow. And at that age, they, they're really becoming extremely feminine, and then right away would have had some kind of sexual connotation, which I really didn't want. In right. The film I wondered before, them. when I read the, the sort of um, synopsis. Review, yeah, synopsis, yeah. exactly, not review, but yes, um, whether it would take a romantic or f sort of friend direction. And I think, uh, for me personally, it felt more fami family like, you yeah. know, that he sort yeah. of becomes her brother that she had lost. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's so. that, though, for us, it was also that eight, when she caresses him or when she she takes him in her arms mm -hmm. she's in that age where it all mixes up from maybe it's a, it's a love for a, a brotherly feeling maybe a fatherly but maybe something else she's it's right. it's, it's the confusion right. but for her for him it was it's very clear that he's absolutely not interested right. in her uh, sexually and mm -hmm. i was really happy that um because everybody said before we shot uh, and also during the script, they said, if 100% sure that the audience will always have, um, it will always think of that, mm -hmm. that, that there's something that's going to happen. But then when I saw them both <laughs> together, also in castings, um, I realized um, because of him, mm -hmm. it's not going to be because he's so close and you see he's so like almost asexual mm -hmm. that I, I don't, I very, very rarely had anybody say, yeah. oh, you know, there's that kind of. No, not yeah. After seeing the film, it does not. No. Yes, it's mm. very different. So yeah, it's fantastic. And um, I guess maybe we could talk a little bit about the different countries. That choice that you made to to because as you were writing it, I don't know. If, I mean, obviously, practicality-wise, if he's escaping, he needs to go to another country. But yeah. also, that was a, a choice that you made when you were writing and directing. To and I know you yourself have several nationalities. Yeah. So so it was that, of course, because uh, I'm uh, I'm French and I mean Franco-Iranian, but. Mm -hmm but born in Berlin and then we moved to America, I'm in America. <laughs> but then went back to France and, and of course uh, this travel in my films is, is, my last film wasn't with travel but the first one yes was Poland and uh, um, with an Irish actress. It was very, um, it's always, it's very present mm -hmm. and uh, I, and I really um, like the fact of, um, it's of course I, I live in Germany so I was making a German film so to start there but I was always very attracted to Marseille um, because it's a very, I find, visual city. Mm -hmm. And it's like the end of Europe. I mean, one of the end points of Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's already not really Europe. It's not really France, not really Europe, Marseille. Mm -hmm. But it's not really Africa yet either. And I like that fact that uh, basically Africans are wanting to come to Europe, but they're, they're going the other direction. That's where life is. For him. That possibility, yeah. yes. And escape. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> does anyone have any questions for Emily tonight? Yes. Yeah, um, I, just, I really like the film. And at one point, I was almost worried you were going to spoil it with a melodramatic ending. Yeah. And I just wondered if that was always your ending, because you said there were lots of changes along the way. And did at any time did you consider one or a dealer or Timo dying or anything in previous Well, uh, for me, it was always, always, I mean, the what I always knew is that, uh, and for my co-writer too, actually, is that I want. I mean, I, we're going to go. We we're going to go very far and also be brutal and be. But and that's in all the films I've made. It's been ends for us with hope, but opened. I didn't want them to be in Africa, 
dancing <laughs> with the villagers. <laughs> and, but for sure, um, the, I, the most important thing for us was that they, whatever happens, we don't know if they're going to make it on the boat, we don't know if they're going to survive, but whatever happens, they're going together. He accepts her and she, um, and she accepts life. And that was for me the most important thing, that they go together and then, and then it's opened. And it's strange because uh, there's audience, I've already had questions of people who are more pessimistic, pessimistic who say, well, for sure it's a bad ending, for sure they're not going to make it. And <laughs> others who are you know, optimistic thinking, oh, it's a happy ending. It depends, it's open. But for me, it is a happy ending because they're, because, um, this French, because they're together. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did have, we did have a lot of discussions with producers, of course, saying he has to die because that's just the kind of guy he is. Even if he's a sad guy who has gotten, you know, who was traumatized as a child, he needs to die. Or, and it, it was a big fight with one, with, actually with a Swiss a producer uh, where he thought that has to be the end. It has to end that way. And where, I found that so incredibly depressing. Like every time she loves somebody, they're going to die. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. Or the moral of the story is that she's 16, he gets shot, what's going to happen with her? Oh, great, she's going to go back to, I mean, it's the worst thing that could happen to go back to, to yeah. her parents, to that, to that place. Yeah. So for, for, it was a fight, but for sure I would have not, if I had to do that ending, I wouldn't have done the film. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Other questions? Yes, in the middle. <coughs> they had a really strong relationship together, um, which obviously really developed. Um, did you work on that in rehearsals, or did you let that develop on on set as they developed from the Did you did you find that they had a very strong relationship during the whole the whole film, or um, did you feel like act the two actors or the two characters? Oh no, the characters. I mean, they, I felt like when the characters met they had a connection uh -huh, uh -huh. and it, it seemed like he was instantly her chance uh -huh. potentially um but m but maybe because she was attracted to the the fact there was nearly violence in him from the beginning but i um but with i think i guess with an, an adult male trying to be careful not to come across in and also for um kind of a young woman, almost. Um, I guess they have to work at not showing opposite to what your intentions were. I mean, in the, in the writing for us, it was in the beginning, basically, um, they can't stand each other, basically. They're so different. She needs him, and she's just thinking of her goal. She doesn't care about him. She says, I need to get out. This is my way out, like you said. Um, he's, I mean, he's very naive. Because you kill, you could kill again, mm -hmm. but you, who cares? He's killed, and anyway, I have him because everybody's looking for him, so I'm going to take my chance. And he is just thinking, uh, this, is, this is my only way out. I can't stand her, and I don't want her near me, and I don't want to talk with her. And basically, in that, that scene in the tunnel where he ties her up, it's also very open to some people think he would have done it, and some people think he wouldn't have done it. For us, when I was talking to the actor, to Hulat, for me it was clear, you, you're trying to get rid of her. You're gonna, she's not gonna be able to scream, she's not gonna be there, because he's not a killer. He basically killed his father in, the, in effect, and then because he saw him again after many years, and he, uh, because of this trauma, but he's not a killer. And he just wants to get rid of her, but then they're found out, and she also starts to feel, mm, you're not gonna do it. Um, and it's only little by little where, where he sees that she is at his side, she doesn't judge him, she's there, that he starts to open up. And the more he starts a little bit open up, he even helps her to grow by washing his t-shirt, by washing almost like, it's almost like a child sleeping with his... Um, Baby blanket. Yeah, baby blanket. He's a, it's this, he washes almost, the, she has to start new. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but he's, he's helping her to, to move on. And um, little by little, they start to, uh, to, to become a team. And for me, this, the scene where she cuts, he cuts her hair is also a way of, of um, maybe becoming more of an adult, leaving the past behind, but, and starting this moment there 
after the police thing, they're really a team together and they're, they're closer, even though he still doesn't talk much and still has aggressive kind of ways. He won't let her fall. He, he could leave her when she's sick, but he picks her up. And during the shoot, during the two, for the two actors, in the beginning, they were not very close. I mean, Maria's very open, but he, he, was very, he was very open for the castings. I, I he helped me because I had him first to see the girls. He was open then, but funny enough that we had two months break, and uh, when we met for the rehearsal and then the shoot, shooting, he was very um, more distant, more, more closed. He didn't want to joke around all the time or go and have drinks with her afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it's funny enough, um, when we were in Marseille, it's almost like the character, when the character started to open up, he's, he, he opened up as well mm -hmm. with her. With us, he was normal, but it was, I guess, for him, um, kind of a method acting. Yeah. It was important for him not to be too close to her. Yes. And where did you get this basic first idea to tell a character that has such a special wish, a young girl that wants to die? Well, there was two points, but one of them is actually when I was I was living while I was living in London. The actress of my first film, Mairead McKinley, she's a, a wonderful um, Irish uh, theatre actress. And she was in a play called, at the National Theatre, called Roberto Zucco. Mm -hmm. And it's a play from a French playwright, uh, Marie Coltes. And, uh, um, and it's a story about, about a, a serial killer, very, very, very different to Kill Me, but a serial killer. And one of the elements is he, there's a young girl who falls in love with him. She's 14. And he's, uh, he's not as old as Timo, but, but mad. And, every, and he kills his parents, he kills everybody he sees. Everybody's afraid of him, but she, and my friend was playing this young girl, and, uh, but she, because she is drawn to him, she falls in love with him, she has no fear of him. She's the only one who has no fear of him, and so he somehow protects her. Mm -hmm. And I went, I saw, I really liked the play, and I went to see it a few times, and I, I was really intrigued by this, um, by this, uh, um, this relationship between the, the girl and the murder, and this is kind of where it, where it started. And at the same time, I was reading a book about uh, new death experiences. It's uh, people who um, around the world who, who medically die, mm -hmm. um, their heart stops, and then come come back, avalanche or heart attack, and then they come back. And the things that they told, they all tell regardless of gender, religion, uh, age, they all tell of this peace uh, that they felt and the fact that they then, when they were living, they lived so much better because they had no fear of death. Mm -hmm. um, so, they, so they were much braver in life. And, um, and that also worked with me, uh, the fact of a 15-year-old girl is basically, uh, she is in the beginning of life. This is really when it starts. And the fact that this girl wants to die and finds death, something that's much more peaceful, that intrigued me. Uh, and, with, and the fact that these two characters were brought up without much love and how different they go with that. He would never consider mm -hmm. killing himself, though he's really suffered, but he's like a survivor. And the way she, uh, uh, she actually thinks that life is a, uh, death is a solution, but she, life is so close to her. I mean, he's not like the most sympathetic guy. And he's the one who gives her life. So imagine if, if she'd found somebody else as well. Right. Well, probably faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Within herself, even you know, struggling to, to find that life again. Yeah. So, yeah, that strength. It was just impossible in this in the place she was in mm -hmm. to find that. Right. Also, the journey, the traveling, this nature, all that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Did you always, uh, with your writer, had the, the intention to be s that minimalist with the dialogues? So because it's, it's, it's amazing how little you give as information, as background, why they are, how they are, um, but still enough to, to feed and to, yeah, to find some explanations for, for yourself. Was, did you reduce more and more? Or was this the intention from the beginning? No, quiet? it was exactly that. We reduced more and more in the beginning. It was, and that, that's why it was so interesting because it took so long, the six years, and every time. And it was, it was the interesting thing is because we had, we stopped it because we had to work on the other films, 
And then when we got back to Kyomi, we reread it. We we had so we had the distance of like a month, two months, three months, and we every time we it was like an onion. We took more more away, especially from Timo. And at the end of the day, w with Esther, when we talk about it now, we have the feeling that we sh we could have taken away even more of of him. There wouldn't have been much left. But <laughs> <laughs> but I was sometimes <coughs> I think that for people who aren't German. It's. E uh, I mean, I see the reactions when I showed around the world, or it's it's gone to the cinema in France, and the reaction of the audience regard regarding Timo is uh, are more positive than in Ger in German speaking countries. Mm. Um, with Adela, there's no problem. She's the, the reactions are always always very positive. Mm. But uh, I think through the the reading, and if you don't understand the language, um, it's easier because there's still. I feel, and, and Esther, my co-writer too, that there's still, we sometimes feel, I don't know you as a German, if you felt that sometimes we feel that he's, it's not his language, it's the scriptwriter's language, that it's, whereas Adele it is, and sometimes we feel maybe we should have taken, he should have been even less. Mm -hmm. Is it because of him, or is it because that the, fl the few sentences that he has that he especially puts on? Yes, it, 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 it's both. It's because uh, Wuland is a Swiss actor, and, and Swiss actors have an accent. And he's a lot of Swiss actors, or Austrian, or whatever, they concentrate really hard to, because the, to have an, uh, this perfect German. Mm -hmm. I found this out later. I didn't know that. And I guess it's as if an, an actor here from Leeds has to play, you know, this Queen's English. He will probably concentrate very hard if it's not his natural way of speaking. And I think this was one thing with the language that sometimes he 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 speaks too clear, and which is not really uh, Timo. And I, and sometimes it's the way we wrote it. But it's not always. It's just in some scenes where I think we could have put it away. In many scenes, when it comes from the stomach, I find it's fine. Mm -hmm. But talking, just answering your question about reducing. I could see it working as well because he has so many inner struggles that that might come out, you know, on that realistic level as well with struggling with the accent and the language yeah, and yeah. things. But that might actually work with the character. How was it for you, non-German speaking? Did you have a problem with Timo's? language. Oh, I mean, <laughs> talk. No? It's really interesting actually hearing that because, I mean, personally, I don't have a problem at all. And I think he's amazing. Yeah. A really strong character. So it's really interesting hearing that about the German. I was really, uh, I, I was really quite saddened by the fact that, uh, that like in the German press when the film came out, you know, people were quite cruel to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and then, for example, a few months before it came out in France, and they were just saying he and her, they're both amazing. And I was like, that's, that's amazing how just the language and reading and hearing how yeah. how different one. Um, uh, I mean, he also in, in Germany, there's also people who thought he was brilliant, but it was definitely uh, when there was a critique, it all often came from him. Mm. Interesting. Are there any last questions?